Feds at noon starts right now. New this noon, two people are now facing charges after deputies found a man dead in Pleasanton on Tuesday. Investigators arrested David Castleberry and Clarissa Guillen for the murder of 25-year-old Lucio Carmona. The Atascosa County Sheriff's Office says they zeroed in on the suspects and found them at a motel in San Antonio. They were both arrested on unrelated warrants and taken in for questioning. Atascosa Sheriff David Soward says they confessed to killing Carmona. It's not clear if they knew the victim. San Antonio police have been searching the streets for a man tied to a cutting that happened in a car. The victim was slashed overnight while in a limo parked outside a downtown funeral home. As Katrina Weber reports, police believe he had been calling this car his home. A car turned crime scene captures the attention of San Antonio police. They comb through it for evidence connected to a cutting. Although this limo parked outside Emmy Rodriguez funeral home appeared to be past its heyday, Police believe it was providing the comforts of home to a 32-year-old man. He told them he was living in it up until about 4.30 this morning when another man threatened his life, slashing him all over his body with a knife. Police say after the stabbing here, the victim didn't stay put. He made his way across the street to that motel to get help. Officers found him in one of the rooms there. They say a friend staying at the River Inn Motel helped him call 911. The victim was taken to a hospital, but police say his wounds were not life-threatening. While investigators went through the car looking for evidence, officers searched the area near South Frio and Guadalupe for the suspect and a woman who was a witness. They say the victim told them he has no idea why he was attacked, that he couldn't understand why the man who stabbed him was so upset because his attacker spoke only Spanish. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, the mother of the Robb Elementary School shooter was arrested in Oklahoma City after she allegedly threatened to kill a man. That's according to police. Jail records show Adriana Martinez Reyes was charged with assault and battery at, and threatening to perform an act of violence. A report from Oklahoma City Police states an officer was called to a home after a caller reported Reyes was threatening to kill a man. The man told officers that Reyes became angry with him. A police report states he believed she would attack him in his sleep. Reyes was booked into the Oklahoma County Jail on Wednesday. Oklahoma City Police told KSAT that Reyes confirmed she's the mother of Salvador Ramos, the 18-year-old gunman who opened fire inside Robb Elementary School on May 24th. He killed 19 students and two teachers before he was shot by law enforcement. Police have a lot of questions for two people taken into custody near a shooting scene. The trouble started around 1 this morning at a bar on South Presa, not far from Brook City Base. Now, police say two groups started fighting, and at some point, someone pulled out a gun and, a shot, and shot a man in the chest. He was rushed to a hospital. This noon, the search for a shooting suspect continues after bullets started flying on a basketball court on the north side. It happened on Copper Hill Drive, not far from 281 and 1604. Police tell us several teens were playing basketball at the neighborhood court when a fight broke out. Officers say a man fired several shots, hitting a 19-year-old in the arm. Several people forced to leave their homes after flames broke out last night on the east side. Crews say seven people were inside a home on Roark Drive when they smelled smoke. That's when they realized the garage was on fire. All of the people made it out safely. However, firefighters say a cat died in one of the bedrooms. Right now, crews are still trying to figure out what sparked the fire. And a look outside with live cam, 68 degrees outside. It was a beautiful morning, chilly, but very beautiful. It was nice. So we started off not as cold as yesterday. We had some moisture streaming in and that resulted in some fog and cloud cover. Now we've got partly cloudy skies here over the airport. It's uh, it's another great day. The, the weekend does change a little bit. We're going to get some rain chances back in the picture and it will be a little bit damp to start your Saturday. Plus, we could see some showers and storms late in the day tomorrow. First, though, let's start with today and go outside for you once again. There is the scene partly cloudy 69. Look at that dew point up to 60. If you remember yesterday, the air was extremely dry. We had dew points in the 20s. That has changed drastically thanks to southerly winds around 11 miles per hour. So it'll feel a little bit more sticky out there today. Temperatures eventually climb into the 70s this afternoon. We'll lose some of this cloud cover and uh, we'll get mostly sunny, I think, later today. You see the cloud 
cover is really starting to shrink in size here, but still fairly cloudy around Kerrville and Hondo up towards Bandera. You'll see some sun eventually too. It'll just take a little bit longer there. Temperatures right now 64 in Kerrville underneath those clouds, 68 in Hondo, but we're closing in on 70 in San Antonio where there has been more sun. 77 Pleasanton, 77 in Kennedy. Those are places that could be looking at 80 degrees this afternoon. Here around San Antonio, low 70s at this hour. Your case at 12 hour forecast. 74 by 3 p.m. We top out close to 75 and then back down into the 60s tonight. You'll catch a glimpse of that full moon briefly before the clouds build back in overnight. We get some fog and drizzle to start our Saturday. More on the weekend forecast and what lies ahead next week coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Justin. The House Republican saga on Capitol Hill has no immediate end in sight. Conference leader Kevin McCarthy has now lost the votes to become speaker 11 times in the last four days, and a 12th vote is underway right now. There were signs pointing to some progress to break the Republican stalemate. However, none of the movement behind the scenes have yet resulted in more votes for McCarthy since the marathon began in the House on Tuesday. The standoff testing, the patience of many lawmakers across both sides of the political aisle and continues to hold up critical government business. Our constituents call me and they, they want help with passports, visas, uh, disability claims, say with the VA, and all that's on hold. And that's because of these 20 people who are holding us hostage. Some of McCarthy's supporters believe he's giving too much to those opposing him. And members of the House of Representatives gathered in front of the U.S. Capitol today to mark the second anniversary of the January 6th attack. Now, two years ago, pro-Trump protesters stormed the Capitol in an effort to halt the certification of the 2020 election after Donald Trump's loss to Joe Biden. Since then, the Congressional Select Committee investigating the attack has filed its report and made criminal referrals to the Justice Department. The Justice Department continues to investigate, prosecute, and convict those involved in the attack. President Biden is set to award the Presidential Citizens Medal to 12 people who showed courage and selflessness around the events of the Capitol attacks. That's set to happen around 1 this afternoon. We'll bring you the latest and live when it happens. The suspect in the brutal murders of four college students in Idaho is being held without bail after making a court appearance yesterday. ABC's Alexis Christophers explains that hearing revealed chilling new details. Brian Koberger appeared in an Idaho courtroom Thursday, facing multiple charges related to the murders of four college students last November. Do you understand? Yes. Kaylee Gonzalez's father described seeing the suspect in court. He didn't have the swagger that I think he thought he was going to have being put in that type of situation. I think you see somebody who feels overwhelmed and defeated. The 18-page affidavit from authorities reveals a chilling account from one of the surviving roommates. She says she awoke around 4 a.m. and thought she heard Kaylee say, there's someone here. She looked out of her room but saw nothing. She then looked out again when she thought she heard crying from Zana Cronaudel's room and heard a male voice saying, it's okay, I'm going to help you. She opened her door a third time, standing frozen as she saw a man clad in black clothing and a mask that covered his mouth and nose, saying he was athletically built and had bushy eyebrows. He then left through the sliding glass door. The roommate locked her door and authorities say police were not contacted for another eight hours. Police mapped out his likely route to the house. They say cell phone data also shows Koberger was near the victim's home at least a dozen times before the murders and the morning after. Police say they discovered DNA on a tan leather knife sheath left next to one of the victims, linking that DNA to Koberger by collecting his father's DNA from the trash outside the family home in Pennsylvania. Koberger did not enter a plea on Thursday but maintains his innocence. Another hearing in the case is set for next week. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. In men's college basketball, the UTSA Roadrunners stormed the court last night. Larry has more later in sports. A one-of-a-kind book aims to preserve and celebrate Tejano music, how the book will help students, faculty, and researchers at UTSA. A one-of-a-kind book is telling the story of accordionists and the musical art form they helped develop right here in San Antonio. Tiffany Huertas shows us how this book is preserving and celebrating Tejano music. 
This is a very special book for our community with several details and surprises in it. Check it out. Those behind this book say it's important because it highlights musicians who are major figures in Tejano music but are rarely talked about. We have Steph and Amy with UTSA Special Collections. Thank you for joining us. Steph, let's start with you. Tell us about this unique book. So this is an accordion book made out of an accordion. It's an artist book. It's one of a kind. We commissioned it from Peter Thomas. Uh, who lives out in California, and um, he has made other accordion books in the past. We asked him to make one specifically about accordionists in San Antonio and South Texas, mm -hmm. and he pulled out this one-of-a-kind piece for us. And all of these were hand-colored by Peter's wife, Donna Thomas, uh, the paper he handmade, and he constructed this incredible piece for us by hand. Beautiful. And Amy, tell us about how important this is to have it here at UTSA. Well, we're always looking for uh, interesting ways to engage students so that they can learn about um, the history of San Antonio and South Texas. And, um, you know, as Steph mentioned, this is um, not necessarily a, a history that gets celebrated. So um, we felt like this, this was uh, incredibly important to pull this together so that we can share it with the community and with students. You have to see it in person because it's about the details. And you can tell a lot of love went into this project. Reporting from UTSA, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Wonderful story, Tiffany, and taking a look outside through Life Cam. It's a, it's a gorgeous day, 69 degrees, and there are some clouds. You know, we may or may not be expecting some rain, Justin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, these clouds will continue to clear out, so we're going to see a lot more blue sky into the afternoon. Then the clouds come right back in tonight into tomorrow, and tomorrow will be a cloudier day. The aquifer, it's down again, two tenths of a foot, 636.2. We can use some rain. There is some in the forecast. And in the pollen count, I'm sad to say that Mount Peter jumped back up today. It's at 8,320, still in the high category, causing a lot of issues uh, around the area. Molds are low at 460. Your weekend forecast, straight ahead. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. Listen, the weather has been beautiful and uh, now with a little bit of cloud coverage, but it's OK. The temperatures feel fantastic. It was so nice. I was at UTSA's main campus and just the walk from the parking lot, Justin, yeah. to the building was nice. It was perfect. It's perfect. It's been it's been a great stretch to start 2023. The, the weather's been nice. The humid humidity is up a little bit today, so there's that. But uh, the temperature is great and we had some fog and drizzle this morning. Well, really just fog. There wasn't really reports of uh, that much drizzle, but just fog. But it's going away and the blue skies are starting to jump out. And as we get into tomorrow, we're going to get the clouds building back in and another round of fog and drizzle. But temperatures still stay in that comfortable range. We've had a stretch here where we've been in the 70s almost every day. Can't ask for better numbers than that. That cloud cover, that fog that we saw this morning, uh, the fog is all dissipated, but uh, the low clouds still there in spots, really trying to shrink now at this hour. Kerrville, Hondo still seeing cloud cover. Uh, Rock Springs, it's ending for you. San Antonio seeing quite a bit more sun as the back edge of this uh, kind of falls apart. Uh, 69 degrees at the airport, 77 Pleasanton, 64 Kerrville, 68 in Hondo, 72 down there in Carrizo Springs. So places that have seen more sun today are obviously a little bit warmer underneath clouds a little cooler but it'll all even out this afternoon a lot of us will be in the 70s we already are stinson 73 one of the warm spots here in bear county because you've seen sun a little bit longer than the north side of the county right now at the airport 73 as i mentioned at stinson but 69 uh, at the airport southerly winds at about 11 miles per hour and those winds have been a little bit gusty here and there and i think we'll get some gusty winds but what those winds are doing are really uh, ushering in quite a bit of moisture. Dew points are up 33 degrees from this time yesterday. So what a change. Uh, that is what we've seen so far this year. The temperatures haven't really uh, changed all that much, but the dew points have fluctuated up and down. So we've had some pretty dry days, and then we've had some humid days like today and what we're going to see tomorrow. So your case at 12 hour forecast, 73 by 2 o'clock, 74 by 3 p.m. We're up around 75 for a high today. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 15, but they could gust 20 to 25. And then tonight, as we said, you may be able to catch the full moon for a little while before the clouds build back in and it becomes cloudy probably by midnight or so. The dew points will continue to rise. We started off in the 40s this morning, but dew points already in the 60s and now jumping up into the mid 60s, I think by this evening. So that's where you get into the muggy territory and it's that flow 
uh, coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. And here's our fledgling area of low pressure, which is now really starting to take shape. You got the trailing frontal boundary and that front will start to slowly move through Texas over the next 24 hours or so, eventually making its way down towards our neck of the woods and bringing some rain with it. So here's a look at the forecast. Uh, nothing today. Uh, in fact, it doesn't show any cloud cover, but watch the clouds just explode tomorrow morning. So everyone goes cloudy. We've got the fog and drizzle. It could be a little bit damp tomorrow morning. And then the front starts to work into the area. Rain chances are probably pretty low in the afternoon, but as we head towards the evening hours, we start to ramp them back up. Some showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms, even like even right behind the front, we could see a little bit of activity, a 30% chance. The best opportunity for any significant rain is going to be San Antonio and points east. How much rain can we see? Probably only a tenth of an inch to quarter or half an inch San Antonio points east. If you're west of San Antonio, I would not expect much, unfortunately. And just get out towards Houston, up to an inch of rain will be possible. Uh, so the extended forecast will go 74 tomorrow, generally cloudy, 40% chance of morning drizzle, and then a 30% chance of isolated uh, showers and storms Saturday night into early, early Sunday morning. But we clear out Sunday afternoon. <coughs> a sprinkle on Monday, quite a bit of cloud cover, but more sun Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with more comfortable temperatures. Guys. All right, thanks, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Now let's segue from weather over to sports. Larry, I know we have a game tonight. How is that going to look? So the Spurs are hosting the Pistons tonight. San Antonio looking to snap a three-game losing streak. This morning we caught up with Jakob Pertl at shoot-around to ask him how his knee is feeling after he dealt with a bone bruise in November, December. Plus, in the NFL, the news just keeps getting better for DeMar Hamlin. Coming up. Another big relief, you know, off of my chest. Uh, just, just seeing that, just knowing that he's responsive and, and, and you know, writing on paper is, is good. So. Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins, who was involved in the play that sent Bills safety Demar Hamlin into cardiac arrest, is feeling much better now that Hamlin is improving in big board sports. The Spurs will play their first home game in the new year when they host the Detroit Pistons tonight. San Antonio opened 2023 on the road, losing at the Brooklyn Nets 139-103 and then to the New York Knicks Wednesday night 117-114. Jakob Pertl missed a handful of games in November, December with an e-bruise and he was asked this morning how he's feeling. Like it, hasn't, it hasn't really bothered me, um, so I'm, I'm glad uh, uh, I kind of worked my way through it. Um, I'm glad all the rehab paid off. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping it will stay this way. Spurs starter Devin Vassell will have an arthroscopic procedure on his left knee this coming Wednesday. The Spurs telling us the surgery will be performed by Dr. Riley J. Williams III in New York on January 11th, and there is no timetable for his return. Vassell has been bothered by soreness in that left knee that caused him to miss several games this season, including two games before he returned against Brooklyn, only to have to sit out the Spurs' loss to the Knicks. Wednesday night. In his absence, you should see more playing time for Romeo Langford and Malachi Branham. So the Spurs will host the Pistons tonight at 7. Josh Richardson is questionable with a right quad contusion. UTSA hosting Middle Tennessee last night at the Convocation Center, and John Bugs III sent the home crowd away very happy, tied at 72. Clock winding down to zero. Bugs for three. And it's nothing but net beating the buzzer, a game-winning three for the third himself. A little March Madness action going on in January. Bugs had 11 points to help UTSA win 75-72 for the Roadrunners' first Conference USA win this season. So they're now 7-8 and eight overall and 1-3 and three in conference play. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin is breathing on his own and able to talk after having his breathing tube removed, his agent said today. The latest step in his remarkable recovery in the four days since going into cardiac arrest and being resuscitated on the field during a game against the Cincinnati Bengals. This was first reported by The Athletic. Yesterday, we learned that Hamlin started communicating and riding with his family at his hospital bedside. News that certainly makes so many people feel much better. What a great news day to get before we went out to practice. Um, what we'd all been waiting for. And we heard that news this morning, and there's nothing that, that could have been told to us to bring our day down. You know, we're extremely happy for him and his family. Um, you know, we just want to love up on him. 
The NFL decided not to resume the Bills Bengals game. Commissioner Roger Goodell confirmed that as they work on seeding for the playoffs. So that is awesome to hear he's improving. Definitely good news, and I'm sure his family is just thrilled to hear yes. he's doing much better. Yes. All right, thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, love may be in the air, but a warning for lovebirds, scammers may be looking to take advantage. How romance scams are targeting those dating online and what law enforcement is doing to stop them. And it's the start of the new year, and for a lot of people it means refocusing on health. 2023 is all about tech, the kind that can help you achieve your goals today at five. While sales are sparse, there are still some savings to snag from workout equipment to progress tracking technology. 12 on your sites, Marilyn Moritz shares the deals to steal on the new Z5. Over 200,000 jobs have been added, which points to a healthy economy, but also a sign for interest rates to stay high. That's according to the Labor Department. They say although December saw a decent amount in job growth, it still was the lowest monthly increase in two years. Now, economists project the unemployment rate to reach 4.6 percent by the end of this new year. The Federal Reserve is concerned about the fast pace of wage growth, which it sees as a reason why inflation is likely to remain high. A warning as we approach Dating Sunday, what has been called the biggest dating day of the year. According to law enforcement, reports of romance scams are on the rise, costing Americans nearly $1 billion last year alone. ABC's Whit Johnson has the details on what's being done to take scammers down. When Rose Martin met Diego Francisco on an online dating site, she thought she had found her match. He sent me a picture of him in a muscle t-shirt. and He was showing me this dessert he made, but I didn't pick up on anything out of the ordinary. Authorities say behind the facade of her Italian suitor were actually six suspects indicted in federal court in 2021, accused of running a three and a half million dollar romance scam. These people are predators and they're conducting emotional and financial warfare. It's a reboot of an age old scam, says the IRS, tricking new victims today. The story that they used often was the scammer was purporting to be on an oil rig. He sent me a video of him doing the job under the water. Then all of a sudden this was going wrong and that was going wrong. And he would ask me to send money to get the machine fixed. Over the course of several months, Rose telling us she sent the man she thought was Diego more than $175,000. The scammers so convincing, Rose said they would send links to fake websites showing bank accounts flush with funds to reassure her that she would get her money back, even video chatting with her. That's what they're doing now. Something as low tech as taking someone's video off of social media and just dubbing your own voice over it. Investigators telling ABC News the six suspects behind Diego are Nigerian. One defendant, Oluwatomiwa Akintola, pleading guilty this October, sentenced to over four years in federal prison. According to the indictment, Akintola's shell company received over $700,000 from multiple victims, including money from Rose. In this case, the money went to luxury items for themselves. They put money back into their business to send out documents that appear legitimate, that are fake. Documents like the photo of this passport claiming to belong to Diego. ABC News used reverse imaging on the photos of Diego sent by the alleged scammers and learned that they are instead pictures of T.R. Pescott, who works as a model. The images matching those posted to Pescott's confirmed Instagram account. We arranged for Rose to meet TR virtually. It's so very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. As you can tell, my voice is not the same, I guess, from the person. To no, it's not. It's totally different. It's been crazy. I have to say over the past four or five years, almost every week, I receive up to a dozen messages more from women around the world saying that, I've scammed them, but then also showing me different profiles of other aliases using my photos. The U.S. Secret Service, who jointly investigated this case with the IRS, says they've recovered $100 million from such bad actors in 2022 alone. One of the tips is to do some of your own detective work. Bad actors are many times lazy and they will look anywhere they can for a photo. Many times you'll find that that image is posted in Instagram, Pinterest or some other uh, social media type service. 
That was ABC's Whit Johnson reporting. Southwest says its recent service meltdown over the holidays is going to cost the airline at least $725 million, and it could hit up to $825 million in a financial filing issued today, the airline said this will cause the company to report a loss in its fourth quarter. Revenue loss alone cost Southwest at least 400 million other costs to include reimbursements, extra employee hours, and the goodwill offering of a frequent flyer benefits to travelers. And Peloton has agreed to pay $19 million for failing to report unsafe treadmills and distributing recalled ones. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says it's one of the largest civil penalties in its history. That's largely due to Peloton originally declining to recall its Tread Plus treadmills despite an urgent request. The commission says the exercise company started receiving reports about the equipment as early as 2018, but it didn't recall the treadmills until May of 2021. Now, following the death of a six-year-old child and dozens of other injuries. And outside with live ham, look at that. That's a very nice day. Cloudy, nice 71 degrees outside, Justin. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is nice. I went out last night to uh, take the dog out and the moon was so bright it almost felt like it was daylight mm. outside. We've almost got a full moon now uh, and it will actually be occurring tonight. Five o'clock, that's technically when we have the full moon and you may catch it briefly tonight before the clouds move in. It's the full wolf moon if you're curious. Skywatcher caught it last night. That's a beautiful shot. Last night it was 99.2% full. Tonight it is full. And if you want to learn more about the wolf moon, Meteorologist Mia Montgomery wrote a great article on our website, KSAD.com. You can check it out and learn more and learn when you can go check it out. Pollen count, if you missed it earlier, I think it's worth repeating. Mountain cedars in the high category, 8,320. It is up from yesterday. So if you're suffering, this could be why we know the cedar season is in full effect now and cedar fever is uh, giving a lot of people fits. Uh, we hope, we hope it comes down a little bit tomorrow, especially if we can get some rain. Molds are low at 460. Looking at your case on 12 hour forecast, we should be close to 75 this afternoon, 72 at 7 p.m. Mostly clear, but those clouds begin to fill in tonight. I'd say as early as midnight, you'll start to see the cloud cover pouring in. And then by tomorrow morning, fog, drizzle and uh, some showers and maybe some thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. More on that forecast in just a bit. All right, a well-known volcano is erupting. This volcano is in Hawaii, known as Kilauea. Uh, the volcano is erupting again. This is a photo of the eruption taken from the U.S. Geological Survey's webcam. Officials say the eruption is currently confined to a large crater and poses no hazard to communities. The USGS notes there is high levels of volcanic gas in the area, which has the potential to create airborne health hazards in people, animals, and plants. And the Spurs held shoot around this morning with Devin Vassell, who needs to have knee surgery, hear from this and his teammates later in sports.